تفت فؤادك الايام فتا وتنحت بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد قال الناظم رحمه الله ابدا بالحمد مصليا على محمد خير النبي ارسلا وذي من اقسام الحديث عده وكل واحد اتى وحده اولها الصحيح وهو ما اتصل اسناده ولم يشد او يعل يرويه عدل ضابط عن مثله معتمد في ضبطه ونقله والحسن المعروف طرقا وغدت رجاله لك الصحيح اشتهرت وكل ما عن رتبه الحسن قصر فهو الضعيف وهو اقسى من كثر وما اضيف للنبي المرفوع وما لتابع هو المقطوع والمسند المتصل الاسناد من راويه حتى المصطفى ولم يبن وما بسمع كل راوي يتصل اسناده للمصطفى فالمتصل مسلسل قل ما على وصف اتى مثل اما والله انبان الفتى كذاك قد حدثنيه قائما او بعد ان حدثني تبسما عزيز مروي اثنين او ثلاثه مشهور مروي فوق ما ثلاثه معنعن كعن سعيد عن كرم ومبهم ما فيه راوي لم يسم وكل وكل ما قلت رجاله على وضده ذاك الذي قد نزل وما اضفته الى الاصحاب من قول وفعل فهو موقوف زك ومرسل منه الصحابي سقط ومرسل منه الصحابي سقط وقل غريب ما روى رو فقط وكل ما لم يتصل بحالي اسناده منقاطع الاوصال والمعطل الساقط منه اثنان وما اتى مدلسا نوعان الاول الاسقاط للشيخ وان ينقل عن من فوقه بعن وان والثاني لا يسقطه لكن يصف اوصافه بما به لا ينعرف وما يخالف ثقه فيه الملا فالشاذ والمقلوب قسمان تلا ابدال راو ما براو قسم وقلب اسناد لمتن قسم والفرد والفرد ما قيدته بثقه او جمع او قصر على روايه وما بعلة غموض او خفاء معلل عندهم قد عرفا وذو اختلاف سند او متن مضارب عند اهيل الفن والمدرجات في الحديث ما اتت من بعض الفاظ الرواة اتصلت وما وما روى كل قرين عن اخيه مدبج فعرف حقا وانتخي متفق لفظا وخطا متفق وضده فيما ذكرنا المفترق مؤتلف متفق الخط فقط وضده مختلف فخش الغلط والمنكر الفرد به رو غدا تعديله لا يحمل التفردا متروكه ما واحد به انفرد واجمع لضعفه فهو كرد والكاذب المختلف المصنوع على النبي فذلك الموضوع وقد اتت كالجوهر المكنون سميتها منظومه البيقون فوق الثلاثين باربع اتت abiyatuha thumma bi khairin khutimat this is the book is 34 lines bi idnillah al karim one can memorize it in one or two sits if he puts his head and mind to it it isn't very hard um and inshallah we're going to start the way we're going to explain the book inshallah bi idnillah al karim is so simple and easy we don't want to complicate it we don't want to go into too much information because that awaits us in the next book that we're going to take inshallah The Nadim, the author of the book, um, he said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, Abda'u bil hamdi musalliyan ala. Abda'u, I start. He's saying, Abda'u, I start. Bil hamdi with the praise of Allah. He's saying, I start. So he's telling us why he started, he, or what he's starting his book with. He said, Abda'u, I start. Bil hamdi with the praise of Allah. A. 
Hamd means athana'u ala Allahi bisifati al-kamal. Hamd means praising Allah with the great characteristics in which he has. Now, pay attention please. What is the difference between hamd and shukr? Hey, who can tell me? The difference between hamd and shukr. What's the difference? Hey, Muhammad. Hamd wa shukr wa thana. But what does the word hamd mean and shukr? I want the difference. Forget thana. What's the difference between hamd and shukr? Hamd is praising as well as uh, being grateful. Yeah, thank you. Hey, what shukr is just gratitude on its own without the praise. What does that mean? What's the difference? Break it the terms down for me. Uh, shukr is like when you thank somebody, for example. You yeah. thank somebody for something. So you're grateful to them, you're indebted to them for something they've done, so you thank them. Whereas alhamd, you're also praising them. It's like you're saying, this person is amazing because of their character. And there's praise involved with the shukr. So the shukr doesn't involve praising? So if a person gives you something, are you not praising him and being gratitude at the same time as well? Both of them... So you're praising him for something he did for you. Whereas the hamd, you're praising for that person or for that thing. Not for what he did for you? For both. That's also added to this method, something like that. You're good. You're right on that point. MashaAllah, very good. You got it right. The difference between the hamd and the shukr is as follows. The hamd is praising a person for what he is, not what he's done for you. Not what he's done for you, necessarily. It means you praise the person for what he's done for you, and also what he is. That's hamd. Hamd means I praise you for what you are. You're a strong, big man. That's not what you've done for me. That's not what you do for me. I'm just praising you for what you are. You're a very smart man. I praise you for what you are. That's hamd. And also, I can praise you for what you've done for me. So it carries both what you are and what you do for me. That is referred to as hamd. Shukr is only what you do for me, not what you are. Which, so which one in here, from this angle, which one is more broader? Hamd is more broader. Hamd carries the meaning of shukr and also has an additional meaning, which is what you are. Uh, yeah, there's another difference between the two. Sorry, shukr, again, what is what you've done for me, the favor that you've done for me. You've given me a, you gave me money, you helped me, you drove me from one place to another. I say, Akhi, ashkuruk, I praise, I thank you for what you've done for me. It's only what you do for me. But hand is not only what the person's done for you. It is not only what the person's done for you, but also what the person is. Huh. Is hand also uh, when someone gives you something unconditionally? And you, yeah. and then shukr is when it's like an exchange of, is that, is that the broad the meaning that differs them two is that one is what you do for hand is what you do for me and what you are okay. shukr is only what you do for me I can only thank you for what you do for me okay. hand is on the other hand is what you do for me and what and what you are yeah. so that's what is the other difference is it that hand is timeless no they're both timeless they're both timeless if a person does a favor for you, Ashkurk, and there's no limit to it. Forever. I'm thankful for what you've done for me. The other difference is that, the, which one was broader this time that we mentioned? Hamza. Now I'm going to show you the shukr more broader than the hamd this time. So one time the hamd is more broader, and sometimes the shukr is more broader. The next time when shukr is more broader is when you look at where it happens from. The hamd only takes place from the heart and the tongue. That's it. The hand is in the heart for what the person does and by the mouth. Brother, wallahi, you're praiseworthy. Brother, this, that, that, that. That's what? Hand. So hand is by the utterance and what's in the heart. Shukr is not. Shukr is in the heart and the utterance and also an action. And Allah said that in the Quran, I'malu ala Dawood shukran. I'malu do ala Dawood shukran. The people of Dawood do come with shukr. So shukr can be action an action. Like when you do the prostration, to do the sh to do sh you throw yourself into prostration, thanking Allah for what He's done for you. That is now called what? Shukr. Hamd cannot be an action. Hamd cannot be an action. It's only the utterance that you comes out of your mouth and that what's in your heart. Shukr, on the other hand, is what's in the heart, what's uttered in the mouth, and also, and also an action. So one time the hamd is more broader and sometimes the shukr is more broader. It depends on where you look at it from. Remember that's very important. So the Sheikh started his book by saying, Abda'u I start. Bilhamdi with the praise of Allah. 
مصلیان I start محمد مصلیان مصلی is حال من فعل ابدأ ابدأو it's a hal for an action that just passed abda'u. I start, I start praising Allah and whilst I'm praising Allah, I'm also praising the Messenger. Hala kawni, whilst I'm praising Allah, I'm also praising the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, we took the term for the word hal last lesson. Who remembers what it was when we were doing the tafsir of Surah Anfal? We called it a circumstantial, accusative, Naam is called a circumstantial accusative. Naam. It means a situation which is what you're doing. The brother he drank standing up. Hal. His situation was what? Circumstance that he was doing was drinking. So here, Musalliyan, I am praising the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with Allah Azza wa Jal. Ala Muhammadin on Muhammad. Ala on Muhammadin. Muhammad is a name. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khayri nabiyin ursila. The best messenger that was ever sent. Khayri nabiyin ursila. He was the best, he was the best Prophet ever sent as a messenger. And that's a hadith which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated. That the messenger said, Ana sayyidu waladi Adam. I am the master of the children of who? Adam. Wala fakhra. And there is no boasting about it. So the Prophet ﷺ is the best of the children of who? Adam. So the author to start his book by saying that is correct. Khayri nabiyin ursila, the best messenger ever to be sent. The Sheikh starts his book by then saying, Wadi. What does he mean by the word Wadi? Um, the word Wadi is ism ishara. It's like this. Wadi, this. Um, are the types... These are the types, min aqsam, these are from the types of what? Aqsam in hadith is the types of hadith. These are the types of what? These are the types of hadith. There's an issue that we need to know, brothers. Um, the Sheikh is now going to start to mention the types of hadith that exists. And he's going to go one after the other. And we're just going to study each type, what it means, these key terms that you need to know. What does this term mean? This. What does this, what does this, key, what does this term mean? Naam. Each word. Before I go into that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember this, brothers. Before I mention that, I need to I need to give you guys a important point, which I need you all to remember. The science of hadith that we're studying is two types. Is how many types? Now, ilm al hadith dirayatan and ilm al hadith riwayatan. This is the two types of Ilm al-Hadith. What are they? Diraya and Riwaya. These are the two types of science of Hadith. The Ilm al-Hadith Diraya is what? Naam. Diraya is the one that we study. That's a Hadith. 40 Hadiths. And Adab al-Mufrad that we're studying. That's Hadith Diraya. The Fiqh and the understanding of the Hadith. And what's in the ruling. That's it. The Sharh of the Hadith. It's the Adab al-Mufrad. That's Ilm al Hadithi Dirayatan. 40 Hadith, Al Rayad al Salihin, Bulug al Maram. Just a Hadith and a fiqh from it. The second type is called Ilm al Hadithi Riwayatan. And the Ilm al Hadithi Riwayatan revolves around two types basically. It revolves around what? Two types. The first type is Ilm al Jarhwa Ta'adil. Ilm al Jarhwa Ta'adil. Which is the science of who is a thaqi, who is thiqa, who is a reliable individual and who is weak. What do you do? Who are the mu'addilin and who are the majruheen? Who are the praiseworthy ones or the, the, the praiseworthy ones who are praised, praised and those who are criticized, who are weak in their narration? The second type of ilm riwayah is what? Ilm tarikh al-riwayah. The knowledge of the, the tarikh of the riwayah. Um, the, ta the story of the riwayah, hadith. The story, the history of the narrations. And that is the type that this field enters. Uh, which is ilm um, al The deep ilal al hadith if you hear it. Like ilal al hadith for instance if you hear it. That's it.
So those are the two types. And we're going to study today. Which one are we going to study? Naam. And we're studying that type, inshallah. So the author, he starts his book by saying, وَذِي مِنْ أَقْسَامِ الْحَدِيثِ عِدَّةِ the types of narration, the types of hadith that there are, are how much? A lot. Iddah, they're a lot. They're not one or two. They are what? Iddah means it's a number. The types of hadith that exist are a lot. And the Sheikh didn't mention all of them. He did not mention all of them. But we're just going to study what he taught and explain and ex on anything that he hasn't mentioned. We're going to all. We're going to come to it in the other books. So this is just basically a beginner's book. For a beginner's book. Um, and then after that he says, And all of them have come with a definition. So he's saying here that I'm going to bring you all the types of hadith that exist. Sahih, Ba'if, Hasan, Mawquf, Marfu', Musalsal, Mu'an'an, Mukhtalif, Mukhtalif. All of these keywords, what they mean. He's going to bring those terms. And also, وَكُلُّ وَاحِدٍ أَتَى وَحَدَّ And every one of them, the definition will be with it. Ah. Every one of them, he's going to define them. What they mean. What does Sahih mean? What does Da'if mean? What does Hassan mean? You need to know what these terminologies are. Especially nowadays, all the books have this. You can't run away from science of hadith. However much you think I'm going to learn something else, you need to know the terms. What is Sahih? What is Da'if? What is Hassan? What is Mawquf? What is Marfu'? What is Mu'dal? What is Munqatir? What is Makhdu'? What are these terms? I don't understand them. To know them. Because when you look at a hadith, some scholars will say this hadith is Mawquf, this hadith is Mursal, this hadith is Hassan, this hadith is Sahih and Bishawahidi, this hadith is, is authentic with his Mutabaat. What are these words? You need to know. So the Sheikh is saying, I brought the types of hadith that there are, but he didn't bring all of them. And he's also brought the definition with each one. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm only going to tell you each one and the definition, the next one, next one, next one, next one, like that, and the definition, and we're going to move on, move on, okay? So we're able to finish the book all in one sit, inshallah ta'ala. The first type, he says, He said, the first type that he started with, which is what? Sahih. So the first step that we're going to take, that the Sheikh started his book mentioning is what? Sahih. What is the hadith which is Sahih? What is meant by Sahih? Hadith which is Sahih is the hadith, these five conditions are found. These five conditions are present. If ever anyone tells you this hadith is Sahih, he's basically indirectly saying to you, these five conditions have been found. What are the five conditions? One, first condition, شرط, شرط, شرط الأول, اتصال السند, the chain of narration is connected. Good. So when a person says this hadith is sahih, he's trying to say to you the chain of narration is connected. Oh, okay. Two, سلامته من الشذود. This hadith is safe from opposition. It's not shad. We're going to mention each one after the other, but I'm going to give you overall. Shad means opposition. This hadith has not opposed any other narration. Three. Salamatu min al This hadith is safe from defect. Defect. It has no defect. Safe from it. Fourth. Adalatu ruwati. The narrators of the hadith are just narrators. Reliable, just narrators. Last but not least. The narrators have complete memory. The narrator's memory is on point. Those are conditions. If anyone ever says to you this hadith is sahih, he's basically trying to say these conditions are found. First one is, it is sanadi, the chain of narration is what? The chain of narration is connected. What does it mean that the chain of narration is connected? This man is narrated from this man. What does it mean? It means that this narrator had heard from the narrator he's ascribing to. He heard it from him. One. That's what it's meant by it's connected. One. The second one is, or oh, he read this narration on the person 
who he's narrating from, and this is another form of uh, connection. It's connected. Either it can come from the sheikh, or it can come from the student who reads on the sheikh. Both of them are connected. It's as though they heard it. It's connected. He heard it from him, or he told him. If he narr- if the sheikh tells him, and he hears it from the sheikh, he's only allowed to use two forms. Ah, when he narrates it from the sheikh, when he narrates it from the sheikh, the sheikh speaks it out and narrates the hadith, and he's listening. He's allowed to say one of these two. He's allowed to say hadathana. He uses that term. He has to use the word hadathana, which means the sheikh told me, or samiatu. I heard. He's allowed to use those two terms. If he narrate, if he read it on the sheikh, if he presented it to the sheikh and the sheikh listened, like the scholars, what they would do is a student would read it on the sheikh his book, and it was called what Arb. He will exp- he will sp- he will place in front of the sheikh his book. It's like Imam Shafi'i came to Imam Malik and he read what all of it to him. Imam Malik will listen because he's got the memory. He listens. When he finishes, he says, that's all my hadiths, you're right. What does he do then? He's not allowed to say hadathana, he's not allowed to say sami'atu. Because the sheikh didn't tell him, and he didn't hear it from the sheikh. He read to the sheikh. He says, akhbarana. He uses the term, akhbarana. He uses the term, akhbarana. Another thing you have to remember is, <clears throat> if this person is known to sort out the narration, he knows he's known. So we remember, brothers, how many ways does the chain of narration become connected? Ali. The chain of narration, I said it's connected. In how many ways is it connected? Two. What are they? I mentioned two ways that the chain of narration is connected. Hayat Abu Bakr. Connected? When the person, the person who's narrating it heard it from the, um, the sheikh. From the sheikh. Or if he, Barakallahu oh, feek. MashaAllah. Bissama. He heard it from the Sheikh. To his mouth, from the mouth of the Sheikh to his ear. That's the first way connection. The second one is Bil Qiraati Til Ardi Ala Shaykhi. The student reads on the teacher the chain of narration and the teacher listens and says, okay. Ah, that's the two ways it can be connected. And those two ways I mentioned the form. I mentioned the form that the student has to use in both of the different scenarios. When he hears it from the sheikh, he says, Hadathana aw samiatu. We heard it from the sheikh. If the sheikh didn't read it to him, but he's the one who read it onto the sheikh, he has to say, Akhbarana. That's when you see the differences between the word Akhbarana and Hadathana aw samiatu. There's another thing you have to know now, which is if a scholar is known. Now, First of all, before I mention that, what are the ways to know that the chain of narration is connected? How many ways do you know? Two. How many means are used to be, how many words are used for a connected chain of narration? Three. Hadathana, Samiatu, and Akhbarana. And all of them have their different usage. Sahih? Are you all with me? Beautiful. What about if a scholar uses the word Qala or An? He doesn't use the three that we know. He doesn't use Hadathana. He doesn't use Samiatu. And he doesn't use akhbarana, rather he uses the word qala. Qala means that said, the scholar said. Or an, from the scholar. He uses one of those two. He uses either qala, said, or an. The scholars, they will look at the one that's saying the word qala, the student. They look at him as an individual. If he's known to sort out the chain of narration, then this hadith is considered disconnected. Why? Because if I say Abu Bakr said, that doesn't mean I heard it from you. There could have been 10 people that told me about you. And we need to know who those 10 people are in order to know the chain of narration and the authenticity of the people. And I'm not a liar. You can't say I'm a liar. I never lied. You did say it. But I'm hiding the person. Or I use from Abu Bakr. And we look at the person who narrates it with the last two that I just mentioned. The word qala or if the person is Bukhari, we will take it. We'll take it. We don't have any exception. Bukhari used the word qala. And if Bukhari uses the word an, do we take it? Yes. This is a qa'id you need to memorize. The an'anatul Bukhari, the an of Bukhari, and the qala of Bukhari. Yuhmalu ala tisal. We take all automatically that is connected. Bukhari never, ever, ever 
sorted out the chain of narration. He never dropped out people and he never... Nah, he knows that was in his character. Like who? Shu'bat ibn Hajjaj. The great scholar, Shu'ba. What did he say? an azniya. For me to commit zina from my next door neighbor is more beloved to me than for me to sort out a, a, a chain of narration, to organize it. The Shu'ba says, qala or an. Do we take it? Yes, he won't do that. But Abu Ishaq al Sabi'i, for instance, for instance, or Ibn Juraj, these men, if they do it, we won't take it from them. Because they're Mudallisin and Qatar ibn Da'amat al Sudusi. These men I mentioned, if they say qala or an, we won't take it. We want them to say either haddathana or sami'tu. Oh, akhbarana. These three, haddathana, sami'atu, or akhbarana, what is it called? What, is it, what, what are those three called together? Haddathana, listen, barakallah, pay attention. Now I'm going to give you, haddathana, sami'atu, and akhbarana. Those three are called tasrih sima. It means an evidence to know that he heard it. It's clear in hearing. You with me? If a narrator, if, a, if the, the usage of the word حدثنا, or سمعتو, or أخبرنا is used, this chain is connected. Good. And that usage of the word حدثنا, and the word أخبرنا, and the word سمعتو, the usage of it is meant by تصريح السماع. It means clear in evidence that the person heard it. That's clear in it. The word qala and an is not tasrih al-sima. Except for the people who are known never to sort out the chain of narration, such as Bukhari and other than them. Their narrations are considered as what? Their qala and their an is considered tasrih al-sima. Like the haddathana other scholars may use, or the akhbarana other scholars may use, or the sami'atu that other scholars may use. Now some of you may wonder why are we emphasizing on this topic very much. This is the reason why some people made music halal. Yeah. It's because of the narration Bukhari narrated it with the word qala. That narration Bukhari, he uses what? The word? Qala. And what did we just study? Qala is what? <laughs> it's not a tasrih sima. It's not clear in hearing. But they ignorant, didn't understand. Bukhari is not that type of person. He's qala mahmoolun ala tisal. That's a qa'id, it's a principle. Bukhari's qala is considered as though he heard it. Are you all with me? So, so qala and an, it's not. It's not, it's not. it's not considered connected. Unless the scholar is like Bukhari and other scholars, not just him, other scholars, if they use the word qala or an, like Shu'bat ibn Hajjaj or Bukhari, they use an and qala, it's like they use hadathana or akhbarana or sami'atu. Because of their character and who they were. Naam. And Abu Shaq al Sabi'i, Qatada ibn Da'amat al Sudusi, Ibn Juraj. Ha. If they use the word qala, or if they use an, they were scholars, but we won't take it. Because they were known to drop people out. They were known to drop. What is the scholar who drops the hadith out? What's he called? We can't call him a liar, can we? No, he's. I can drop a story by Abu Bakr. I can say Abu Bakr said. I don't have to tell you the whole chain of the people who, who heard it from Abu Bakr. That's my choice. But what am I called when I try doing that? And why would I do it? Those two are needed. Why do I do it? First of all, the reason why I do it is to show that I'm very close to Abu Bakr. Why would I want to go f through five men to the Prophet when I could just throw out four people and just jump to the third person, uh, to the sixth person and just make the chain even more shorter? <coughs> That's something they used to love. So he wants to make the chain even shorter. One. The second reason why he wouldn't want to do that is because he knows there's a weak person in there. Deliberately. And he wants that weak person for it to be not shown. But if he hides it, you can't consider him a liar. It's his choice. Does he have to tell you everybody heard from? So-and-so told me and he told so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so -and -so. He doesn't have to tell you. It's his choice. Like he has a name that's not a liar. His name is called a Mudallis. That's his job. He's a Mudallis. And what he did, what's it called? He's a Mudallis. And what's his action called? The action is called Tedlis. Ah, uh, Tedlis. And he's called a Mudallis. Is Bukhari a Mudallis? Is Abu Ishaq al-Sabi'i a Mudallis? Yes. 
is Qatada ibn Da'amat al-Sudusi. Is he a mudallis? Yes. So sometimes when you read the signs of hadith, you hear Fulan, Fulan, mudallis. You now know what it means, the word mudallis. You're like, I know what it means. So if he narrates with the word qala, I ain't taking it from him. One of the two I mentioned. He either wants to shorten the chain of narration or he wants to he wants to throw a weak person out of it. It's reasons they mentioned. But we're not going to go into that details now. There's different types of tadlis. We're going to come into it in the next book. Have fun, It's not belittling, but it was it was tatabu. Because some of them were caught out. But have we got have I, like me as a layman, have I got the right to say that or is that something upon the scholars to say? The okay. scholars have, if you're talking about science of hadith, scholars have already said that. Okay, okay. They've already said Fulan is a mudallis. And he's a scholar, big scholar. Like Qatar ibn Da'am, he's a scholar, big scholar. But he's a mudallis. Abu Shaq al is a scholar in hadith, but he's a mudallis. That was lillah. This matter has to be clarified to the people. So they don't fall into the, taking that type of narration. And again, he, Tadlis is not slander in the scholar, by the way. It's not slander.